What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 6 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is two more forms of combining data frames and that's going to be merging and joining data frames. Now with merging and joining uh, the main difference between these two they're basically going to do kind of similar things but one will kind of uh, honor an index and the other one doesn't care about your index. So um, anyway, hopefully by the end of this you'll understand which is which and why and why you might use one over the other. So uh, first I will put a link in the description again. We are going to use uh, some sample code that I've already kind of pre-written out. Uh, copy, paste. If you're coming from the previous video and you already copy and pasted this and you're thinking I don't need to do that again, you do. Uh, I did change. I believe the only major thing changed though was unemployment here and I've just kind of filled in some new values. So if you want to do that, go for it. Anyway, if you don't have this, check the link in the description. It'll lead you to the text-based version of this tutorial. Copy and paste this information and you're ready to rumble. It's right at the top. So, first what we're going to cover is merging. So uh, let's merge. Uh, we're going to just print out the results here. So we're going to do pd.merge, and we're going to merge uh, df1 and df2. And then when you merge, you say where you want to merge. So merging is going to kind of ignore the whole notion of index. So we're going to merge on equals HPI. We're printing out that result, so here you go. So we've merged on HPI, and you'll notice that, first of all, on HPI, let's move this down, there are one, two, three, four HPIs. One, two, three, four, okay. But we ended up with more than that. Now, if we come down here, you'll see that, well, we also seem, you know, we've got this other information here, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. And what's happening here is we've got some duplicated data. Now, that's obviously not very ideal. So what is a situation where merging would be ideal? Well, here, HPI has some shared information between these two. But then there's also, you've got interest rate, and then you've got US GDP 1000. So there's also duplicated columns here. So you could ask, well, Harrison, what if we make this a list? Can we merge on multiple columns? Well, you sure can there, little student. Int underscore rate. You can print that out. Ooh, now we don't have such bad uh, data duplication. Look at us. So there you go. You've got HPI, interest rate, and then but well, we still got this US GDP thousands X and Y. Now, of course, we could get rid of that uh, by adding US GDP thousands here. But then why are we merging these two at all? This is DF1, DF2. And now we've lost these, the index entirely, so that didn't work out. So an example of why you would merge in reality is like, let's say you're running a, a website and you've got users on that website and you've also got a forum or something like that. So when a user registers to your website, you're going to have to log their username, uh, their password hash, hopefully you're hashing, <laughs> uh, and maybe an email. Okay, so that's in the user registration table in your database. And then you've got a forum, which might have like their post count, join date, reputation on the forum, all their posts. Uh, and then maybe you've got a user account information, like their settings and stuff like that. Okay. You could have all of that information in one table, but the problem is that table would be huge, especially including the forum posts and stuff like that. So regular queries would be very slow. You wouldn't want all that information in one table. Instead, what you do is you'd split them up, make them nice and efficient, split them up, and all those tables would share the same single column of what? Well, username, right? That's how everything's related. All these other tables are related to each other. They're related by username. So you would pull from all those tables and you could merge on username if at any point you needed to access all the information at once unlikely but maybe you would for whatever reason or maybe you're migrating or what if what if that user wants to change their username or something like that you'd have to be able to go through all of those tables and make the changes or something so anyway uh, merging would be an example there or maybe maybe you didn't have all the databases split up but then you want to bring them together or you know stuff like that you know there's all kinds of reasons why you might want to merge but anyway 
That's why you might merge in some scenarios. In our scenario, we're going to merge, uh, well, we're not going to merge, but we're going to bring things together based on the date. So we're going to have housing price index values for every state. What do they share in common? A date index. So we bring them together. Now, anyway, uh, that's your merge. And you can merge again, yeah, no problem on multiple columns. And then after you're done merging, you could always uh, you could you could set the index value if you wanted so they would have their own little index but that's kinda silly so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we can do a join instead now we're gonna join DF1 and DF3 the problem with DF1 and DF3 is they not only share an index already they also share a column of HPI so um, so what we're going to do is we're going to reset the index on df1 and df3 here. So we're just going to say here df1.set underscore index. We're going to set the index to uh, HPI. And then we're going to say in place is going to be equal to true. We're going to take that, copy, paste, put this df3. So now they share an index but no columns. Okay, So that's kind of important with join. So now we're going to say join equals df1.join df3. And then we'll print out joined like that. And now we've been joined by this kind of this HPI uh, index. Okay. Now, you should notice that, uh, again, we've got some data replication going on here, so not the most ideal scenario. Now, what if they had different indexes? Like, for example, what if, uh, let's take, let's just remove DF2 for now, and let's remove the original indexes. Okay, so you should have information that looks kind of like this, and then what we're going to say is we will, ah, I want those years back. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> we're going to say we'll replace HPI at the top here. So they have a totally different, uh, we'll say year here and year here. And then we'll just empty this, empty this. Now, this one will have 2001, 2002, uh, 2003, and 2004. This one will have 2001, 2003, skipping 2002, uh, 2004, and 2005. Okay? So now, uh, this one misses 2004 that this one has, and this one's missing 2005 that this one has. What's going to happen? <laughs> it's going to be crazy. So... <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete all of this stuff here. And now we're going to say merge equals pd.merge and we're going to merge df1 and df3. And we're going to say we're going to merge them on equals year. Now let's go ahead and print, print merged. Save and run. And you'll see we got at least some stuff. Um, well, let's go ahead and set the index to to merged because uh, it merged on year, but years like over here. But you'll also notice we're missing both 2002 and 2005. That's because of the default way uh, things are merged. But we'll, and we'll talk about that in one moment. Let's go ahead and do merge dot set underscore index, uh, and we're gonna set it to what we were merged on. Gar. <laughs> In place equals true. Good to go. Okay, so now um, what we're going to talk about is how we merge. So if you're familiar with SQL, you can merge databases in SQL, and, and for the reasons I discussed earlier is why you might merge databases, or tables rather. Uh, and there's multiple ways that you can do it. So you have basically four choices. You've got left, right, outer, and inner. Left and right respond, corresponds to these right here. This is left, this is right. Okay, it's just like the side it's on. So DF1 is your left, DF3 is your right. So if you merge on, uh, or I'm sorry, if you merge how left, like so if we say how equals left, like this, it's going to merge based on DF1's keys, which is year. Year is our key here. So it's going to merge based on DF1's years. 
So one, you know, 2001, 2, 3, and 4. So we'll save and run that real quick. Sure enough, we did. 2001, 2, 3, and 4. It just so happens we don't have any information on low tier HPI and unemployment because for 2002, because that's coming from DF3, right? These two. And this didn't have values for 2002. Okay? So that's how left, right would be basically the values from DF3. So we should get 2001, 3, 4, and 5, but we'll have some not a numbers for 2002 because that data just didn't exist. Um, or rather, 2005, sorry. 2002 won't be there because that's one of the keys of DF1. Now, uh, the next thing is you've got outer and inner. So outer joins on what's called a union of the keys. So basically, all of the keys will be represented here. So we'll say uh, outer. And so now you've got oh, 01, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and just some not in numbers where there's no data. Finally, you have inner. This is the default. This is where the keys intersect, basically. So if, if there should be no not a number data here, well, I, I mean, there could be if there was a not a number in this data frame, I suppose. But basically, every one, every, you know, key, right, for year um, that both data frames share will be represented here. In our case, we have no not a number data in either data frame, so there should be no not a number data. But that doesn't mean that you could merge on inner and never have not a number. So anyway, uh, so those are the various ways that you can uh, merge data frames. But again, the main focus of merging is to merge on a specific column. And the reason why you might do that is, is if you share a column and you're trying to bring together two data sets that share a column. Whereas if you're trying to merge or bring together data frames based on an index, uh, as you saw before, index is basically treated like crap by uh, concatenate and append that neither of those really seem to care. Uh, and even merge. Merge doesn't seem to care either about indexes. Whereas with join, index is honored. Uh, so in our case with, say, we've got all these data frames that have uh, index values that are shared for the date, uh, that will be honored and we want that to be honored. So we're probably going to find ourselves using join. Okay, so um, those are the, the four main ways of combining data frames with pandas. Each has their own kind of reason why you might use it, and we try to just cover some of the basics of why you might use each one. Generally, I find myself mainly using, like if you've got data frames that have similar data between them, you're going to use a merge or a join. You would use merge when the index does not matter to you, join when the index does matter to you. You would use uh, concatenation or appending when, um, usually to, to elongate, usually. You can concatenate and, and add columns with concatenation, but um, I rarely find myself using concat for that, but you might find that you like that better or something. And then also appending to add to the end. Now, anyways, that's it uh, for the combining. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about uh, pickling before we get into actually creating this data set. Of our, well, actually, we will create the data set. Um, so before, remember a few videos ago, uh, I think video number four, tutorial four, we talked about, you know, we at least spit out that list of tickers, basically, that we would query uh, Quandl for. Now, we'll actually pull the data frames. We'll start joining the data frames together. And then we'll talk about pickling. So pickling is just where we can kind of save our progress in the script. We can save any object in Python, basically. So variables, data frames, and all that kind of stuff. Fair game with pickle. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, and suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching.